All right, guys, here we are for lesson two of our orientation to the human body. So like I said in the first video, the human body isn't just one solid piece of meat. It's a collection of organs working together to keep us alive and living. Most of these organs are kept inside cavities or hollow spaces surrounded by tissue. There's two broad types of cavities, the dorsal cavity and the ventral cavity. The dorsal cavity is where you'll find what's called your central nervous system, which is your brain and your spinal cord. The brain is found in the skull, which is called the cranial cavity, and your spinal cord is found inside your spinal cavity, inside the vertebrae of your back. The ventral cavities are found in your torso. So first we've got your thoracic cavity, which would be your chest. And then separating that from your abdominal pelvic cavity below, we have this thick muscle called the diaphragm. Besides separating the two cavities, the diaphragm's main purpose is to help us breathe. So the thoracic cavity can be broken into three subcategories, left and right pleural spaces and the mediastinum in the middle. Your lungs live in the pleural spaces and your heart hangs out in the mediastinum. A little more inferiorly, you have your abdominal pelvic cavity, which can also be subdivided into the abdominal cavity and the pelvic cavity. The abdominal cavity has most of your soft and squishy organs, like your stomach, gallbladder, and spleen. Quick note on the abdominal cavity. If you're trying to describe something in the abdomen, say you're having stomach pain, and you're trying to sell, tell somebody where it is, try breaking the abdomen up into four quadrants, or even better, the nine regions shown on the screen. It makes it much easier for us to pinpoint what's going on and what's underneath, what structures are underneath that pain. And if your career is, takes you into healthcare, you can use this knowledge to help diagnose what's wrong with your patient. Have a look at this picture. If I say I'm having upper right abdominal pain, using your knowledge of anatomy, you can start to rule in or rule out organs based on what lives in the upper right quadrant. Pretty cool, hey? All right, we're almost finished. So we've talked about squishy bits. Let's talk about bones for a second. We have two types of skeleton in our body, or more correctly, our skeleton can be divided in two ways. Our skull, spine, and tailbone will be all part of the axial skeleton. Think axis like a, the ax, axle of a car, that rod where the wheels attach and everything pivots around. Our arms and legs and pelvis would then be part of the appendicular system or appendicular skeleton. All right, awesome. So we've got a nice start on our locations, the planes, cavities, and parts of the body. We'll build on this over the next few weeks, but try and use these terms as much as possible so they become familiar to you. All right, let's take a breath and talk about balance. There are millions upon millions of chemical processes going on in the body at any time. There are processes that keep us hot, some that keep us cool, some that speed up our heart, some that slow it down. So in order for us to stay alive and function the way we do, all of these processes need to balance each other out. And that balance is called homeostasis. So how do we keep that balance? Well, the body's full of sensors, usually part of the nervous and endocrine system, that keep track of this balance. Some of them work on a negative feedback loop. That is, when something changes, these sensors work to correct the change and some of them work on a positive feedback loop, meaning that they try and keep the change going. An example of a negative feedback loop would be the thermostat in your house. If your temperature gets cold or if the house gets cold, a switch inside your thermostat flips and turns on the heat. The heat warms up, the heater warms up the house and then as soon as it's warm enough, that sensor turns off and the heat shuts off. It's the same kind of thing in your body. If we get cold, a sensor in our brain says, oh, muscles start shaking or shivering, and that warms us up. Once we're warm, brain tells the muscles to relax. Positive feedback loops are a little more rare. The best example I can think of would be a pregnant mom delivering a baby. Once the water breaks, the baby starts moving forward in the birth canal with the help of contractions from mom's muscles. The more the forward the baby moves, the more the contractions or the harder the contractions get. There's a sensor there that tells the contractions to get stronger and stronger and stronger until the baby's out. Once the baby's out, the contractions stop altogether. 